Another short presentation from the PLC E-University. What is a PLC? This is the ninth in the Factory Rat series. The subject is creating a PLC project. We're continuing to use the Micrologix 1400-1766-L32-BXB. When it comes to creating a project, the I.O. may be different, but everything else in the PLC is going to be identical. I am not going to elaborate on creating a project and all the possibilities. I'm going to do the bare minimum to create a new project. File, new. It wants to know what PLC that you're using, what processor. We happen to be using a 1766 Series A, Micrologic 1400. So I select that, say OK, and there's the project. Everything over here was created for you. All these files, some of which have data, some which you will add data. So I've just created a project of interest for us is the channel configuration. It shows channel 0 is 19.2. However, the controller that I have connected up is 38.4, 38,400. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 38.4K. I'm going to go to channel 1, and this is very important. I'm going to add an Ethernet IP address and then download it to the controller. That way the controller has the IP address that I want. Now we haven't talked about Ethernet yet, so don't worry about all the details of Ethernet. Notice the hardware address is empty. It's just all zeros because the hardware address is the MAC ID and that is associated with the NIC, the Net Network Interface Controller on the PLC. Every single Ethernet port on the face of the earth has a unique hardware address. It's very important that you uncheck Boot P. Boot P and DHCP, Data Handling Control Protocol, they're very similar. The difference is with Boot P, you need a Boot P server and it has to have a fixed IP address associated with that MAC ID or that hardware address. With DHCP, if you select that, then the controller at whatever MAC hardware address you have is going to send out a message onto the network to the server asking for an IP address. The server will then lease that address to the controller temporarily. We prefer fixed IP addresses so we're not using boot P or DHCP. So I'm going to put in an IP address of 100, 100, 186. I just grabbed that number out of the air. I also need a subnet mask, 255, 255, 255. I'm not going to explain what the subnet mask is or the IP address in this particular demonstration. So what I've done is enough to put a known IP address into the controller. Apply and OK. Now I'm going to download this project to the controller. First though, I'm going to go to the controller properties and I'm going to give it a name, Factory Rat. Now I'm going to download it. Now remember, I've already got an RS-232 driver configured and I am connected by RS-232 to that controller that we used in the last short presentation. I always use system comms, comms, system comms, because I can see where I'm going. The DF1 RS-232 DF1 driver comes up being browsed. See browsing and I've got that selected so I can say download and of course there's really nothing much to download and I will call this Factory Rat 00 that belongs to this little project. Now I'm going to say save. Now you'll always see this message, downloading program, blah, 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 to blah, blah, blah. Are you sure you want to proceed? Now the message doesn't mean there's anything wrong. I can see now that the controller that I used earlier was a series A, but you see this says to Micrologix 1400 Series B. It communicated with that Micrologix 1400 and it come back and says, I'm a B, that's fine processor is in the remote run mode. You must switch it to the remote program mode continue. What this is asking is, it's saying that the controller is in the run mode. Is it okay if this software switches it to the program mode to continue? The answer is yes. Now, this is an important message. Communication configuration is different. Well, I can tell you right now that channel one in that controller, that's Ethernet, it's 100, 100, 100, probably 226 or something like that. So what's going to happen is if I say don't apply, then that IP address that I just showed you that I put in there, 100, 100, 186, will not download. It'll leave the IP address that's already in the controller. I think what I'll do is say don't apply just so you can see the difference. Change back to the run mode? Yes. Do you want to go online? Yes. Now we're online. I'm going to go to channel configuration 
It says that the online channel configuration is different than the offline project. We know that. Channel 0 is 38.4, the way we set it. Channel 1, however, is not 86, it's 227. Now, what you don't know about these four values here is they are octets. They are 8-bit binary values. So 100, 100, 100, 227, that's 8 bits dot 8 bits dot 8 bits dot 8 bits. The address of the network, the whole network as a whole, is 100, 100, 100. We know that from the sudden subnet mass, which I'll explain later. Then the address of this PLC on the network 100, 100, 100 is 227. And there you have it. We created a project. We didn't actually create any logic and we downloaded it. And we demonstrated the Ethernet IP address. And that is how you create a new project for a PLC. For more information on this in more detail, a more relaxed philosophical discussion, go to PLC e University on the network, click on Virtual Classrooms, Programmable Logic Controllers, and have at it.